So, Darwin's hamster. I really enjoyed the, the video. Um, I've seen the pictures of, of the, the slit experiments in textbooks a bunch of times, but it was really helpful to see it happen, uh, you know, so step by step, where it's not just the whole thing in one picture. Um, so thanks for running us all through that. But um, your question, like why is why is consciousness why is consciousness starting to come into this topic? Like why is consciousness uh, uh, becoming a part of physics when physics is supposed to be about the material world, the the stuff that's not conscious? And that doesn't require consciousness to, to explain it. It just requires measurement and observation. Um, and I think what's happening is that quantum physics has shown us that matter isn't what we thought it was. You know, it's not uh, a substance necessarily. It's more of a form. So it's more uh, ethereal. It's more airy and uh, wave-like, and um, it's a very holographic, non-local, uh, interdimensional kind of a thing. It's all, and it's vibration. It's vibration and interaction and, and a dance. It's like a it's like a, a cosmic dance of of atoms. And chemical reactions, and somehow chemical reactions become life, consciousness, mind, and then mind observes the beginning of its evolutionary development. You know, it observes the matter that, that somehow gave rise to it, and it wants to know what it is objectively. And that starts to get you into very fish territory. That's when science is, I mean, physics is trying to talk about what there really is. You know, at the end of the day, physics wants to map the objective, external, true world that has nothing to do with any consciousness, with any cultural, you know, projection or, or anything like that. There's no subjective uh, interpretations or judgments or anything. There's only the facts that we have measured and observed. So physics is the extreme of that. And when physics runs up to the, the smallest bits of, of matter, and even when, it, when cosmology tries to comprehend the whole cosmos, I mean, either, one's, either one of these sciences is really dealing with ultimate things. And both of them now, have, have the bottom has fallen out from them. Not that they can't do productive and amazing research still but they they're no long they're no longer looking I mean physicists are no longer looking for matter they know that matter is just measurement all right to explain a little bit better what I mean by um, that matter is measurement and that physics considers matter measurement now I'm gonna just read um, have someone else explain it that they could do it much better than me this is um, called understanding Nama Rupa, which is a Sanskrit word for basically Nama named Rupa form. Nama Rupa named form. Um, it's by Kingsley Hedonia. Bertrand Russell defines matter, Rupa, as the series of appearances of substance that obeys the laws of physics. That is, the appearance of Rupa is independent of the observer, the place, and the time. The Buddha defines it differently, though. For his purpose is to describe the arising and ceasing of dukkha, or suffering. Matter, or rupa, is inertia, and consists of earthly or solid or persistent, watery or cohesive, fiery or ripening, airy or distended movement. This is an elemental description of the behavior of matter. To be experienced, though, in any one or a combination of sights, smells, sounds, tastes, tangibles, and ideas or imagination, rupa, matter, appears as shape, size, color, putrid, fragrant, melody, rhythm, sweet, sour, coarse, soft, exciting, dull, etc. Thus, nama is the appearance of rupa. Name is the appearance of form. What it looks like and not how it is. 
whether solid, watery, fiery, or airy. In other words, rupa by itself cannot be said to exist. So, so let me just translate. Thus, names are the appearance of matter. What it looks like and not how it is, whether solid, watery, fiery, or airy. In other words, matter by itself cannot be said to exist. It must appear, and there must be consciousness to recognize it. Space can be added, but it has no standing of its own. So matter is measurement, or rupa is nama. Matter is, is the names we give it. The measurements, measurements are like names, even numbers, even digits, even any kind of designation or uh, symbolic representation of something is a name. So I'm going to quote now from um, some writing that Sir Arthur Eddington did, a physicist who died, I think, in uh, the 40s, um, wrote about quantum physics and the results that they were getting um, from experiments like the double slit. Uh, it's from a book called Quantum Questions by Ken Wilburn. It's really good. Um, to put the conclusion crudely, the stuff of the world is mind stuff. As is often the way with crude statements, I shall have to explain that by mind, I do not here exactly mean mind, and by stuff, I do not at all mean stuff. Still, this is about as near as we can get to the idea in a simple phrase. The mind stuff of the world is, of course, something more general than our individual conscious minds, but we may think of its nature as not altogether foreign to the feelings in our consciousness. The realistic matter and fields of force of former physical theory are altogether irrelevant, except insofar as the mind stuff has itself spun these imaginings. The symbolic matter and fields of force of present-day theory are more relevant, but they bear to it the same relation that the Bursar's accounts bear to the activity of the college. Having granted this, the mental activity of the part of the world constituting ourselves occasions no surprise. It is known to us by direct self-knowledge, and we do not explain it away as something other than we know it to be, or... Rather, it knows itself to be. It is the physical aspects of the world that we have to explain. Our bodies are more mysterious than our minds, at least they would be, only that we can set the mystery on one side by the device of the cyclic scheme of physics, which enables us to study their phenomenal behavior without ever coming to grips with the underlying mystery. The mind stuff is not spread in space and time. These are part of the cyclic scheme ultimately derived out of it, but we must presume that in some other way or aspect it can be differentiated into parts. Only here and there does it rise to the level of consciousness, but, but from such islands proceeds all knowledge. Besides the direct knowledge contained in each self-knowing unit, there is inferential knowledge. The latter includes our knowledge of the physical world. It is necessary to keep reminding ourselves that all knowledge of our environment from which the world of physics is constructed has entered in the form of messages transmitted along the nerves in the seats in the seat of consciousness. Obviously, the messages travel in code. When messages relating to a table are traveling in the nerves, the nerve disturbance does not in the least resemble either the external table that originates the mental impression or the conception of the table that arises in consciousness. In this central clearing station, the incoming messages are sorted and decoded partly by instinctive image building inherited from the experience of our ancestors partly by scientific comparison and reasoning. By this very indirect and hypothetical inference, all our supposed acquaintance with and our theories of a world outside us have been built up. We are acquainted with an external world because its fibers run into our consciousness. It is only our own ends of the fibers that we actually know. From those ends, we more or less successfully reconstruct the rest as a paleontologist reconstructs an extinct monster from its footprint. So I guess the real question now is, what is consciousness? Um, because it's not, I mean, I don't know if you've seen that movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? But that movie, I thought it was a little too um, too new agey. It was too, you know, you, your ego creates the world. And, you know, it's like, you can do anything. I don't know about that. Because they're, 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 they're picking a very um, specific notion of what this consciousness means. They're picking the ego. And consciousness doesn't necessarily mean the ego, so... Um, that could be a topic for a further discussion, I guess. Uh, I love talking about consciousness, so if you're, if you like my video, let me know and uh, we can continue this.